Um, I'm feeling a bit emotional about this. It'll take me about four minutes to read that page. It's an absolute game changer. It's so good to be able to actually read a book. Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Rosie and today I'm going to be telling you my dyslexia story. So I was diagnosed with dyslexia when I was around 18, 19 in university, but I kind of knew I had struggles before then. So I'm going to start right at the beginning and then talk to you about where I'm at now and how I've finally fallen in love with reading. So I always had problems reading since I was a child. My parents would read to us like stories and things, and but the house was always full of books, but I would never pick them up. I never wanted to read. I was always just playing with toys and you know playing with my brothers, but I never picked up books like voluntarily to read. Obviously I read at school, but I always really did not like it at all. I remember actually in high school, if we had to read out a chapter in front of the class, I would always just read that chapter over and over and over and over. I wouldn't listen to the whole of the rest of the other students talking. I would just focus so much on what I was going to say and I'd get sweaty hands and I'd just freak out and like my heart was racing and I just hated, hated having to read out in class. But especially even just reading in general, I found it so, so hard, which meant that school was really difficult for me. Luckily my best friend in high school loved reading so with my English classes and anything else we had to read things she would always really help me out and kind of explain the stories and explain what was going on if I hadn't read, read the books. So she was a great help and without her I really don't know what I would have done. Also my mum helped me a whole lot because she would help me after school in the evenings with things and projects and you know writing essays and reading books and things like that. She would help read to me and like help me understand what was going on with the books. And so I struggled quite a lot as a child, obviously with primary school and then high school in particular as well. Um, I hated reading books for classes, I hated reading that in class, I hated having to do tests and write essays. Um, I just found the whole thing really hard and really challenging and I kind of thought maybe everyone felt that way, maybe it was just, you know, reading was hard and answering questions was hard and doing all this was difficult. I don't think I really quite realised that it was especially difficult for me rather than compared to other students. So then I went to college and I did um, creative subjects, so I studied textiles, um, design technology, graphics design maybe, just creative subjects basically where there was less writing and it was more about being creative because that's what I enjoyed. I hated essays, I hated reading, you know, I hated anything that was kind of written or, um, or read. So I studied lots of creative subjects because that was what I enjoyed but also that was what I was good at and I didn't really, really struggle with. And then at university I studied textiles. So you would think that doing a textiles degree it's going to be all practical based and all, you know, sewing and knitting and weaving and embroidery and all these kind of things. But actually I did have to write essays as well. And this is when I went to get the dyslexia test because I'd, I think I'd heard that you could get a free laptop which I didn't really, you know, that wasn't really my motivation. The main thing was that I would get more time or more leniency, I think, with my essays and things like this. I can't quite remember the specifics of it, but I remember it would help me out in some way with, with my degree course if I got diagnosed with dyslexia. So I thought, okay, I'll go in for the test and, you know, find out if I have it or not. I was already pretty convinced I had, but it was just good just to get it written down in paper and have something to say to you, okay, this is what's going on, and that's why you struggle so much. And actually I remember that test even now because I remember she was talking to me about different things that happened throughout the day and things that I get confused with and things that I struggle with and it was so nice to have somebody kind of explain it to me and understand what I was going through and to sort of explain well you know all of this is because of the dyslexia it's not just because you're stupid or because of this that and the other. It was nice to get some sort of validation and kind of like this is the reason why you struggle with numbers and letters and you know everything really. So I was given a free laptop, I was given um, a recording device to be able to record my lectures. I think I was given some, like, a grey sheet of paper that I could put over books and it was supposed to help me with reading. But yeah, from then I kind of didn't really take it seriously. Um, the main reason I got the test was just to find out if I was or not, which kind of I knew already. Um, but it didn't particularly change a whole lot in terms of me reading or progressing in that sense. So I'm now just going to read online what it says dyslexia is, just in case you're not quite sure, this is the kind of summary. So it says, dyslexia is a learning disorder that involves difficulty reading due to problems identifying speech sounds and learning how they relate to letters and words. Also called reading disability, dyslexia affects areas of the brain that process language. So that's just a kind of little overview of what dyslexia is, but basically it affects you reading, it affects numbers, it affects writing, it affects comprehension, um, it affects loads of different areas of different people's lives, it affects people differently as well. You can have a severe case of it or you can have like a minor kind of not so bad case. 
Um, I feel like mine's probably in the middle. I do struggle quite a bit with certain things, but then other things I am okay with. So generally the there, there, there things I'm okay with and where, were, we're, things like that I'm okay with. Um, but I think that's just because I didn't want to be stupid. I know this might sound offensive, I don't know. But I didn't want to be that person who kept making mistakes all the time. So these specific ones, like which and which, I really drilled into my brain so I knew the difference so that I wouldn't make these easy mistakes that other people don't make. So in terms of that, I feel like I'm okay. I kind of learned them and taught them myself so that I wouldn't, you know, keep making these mistakes. But I just wanted to point out some of the things that I do struggle with. Even now, as a 32-year-old woman, I still struggle with dyslexia and I probably will do forever. But these are things that have affected me uh, probably the most with dyslexia. So I often get D and B mixed up. So for example, if someone's called Alba, I'll struggle with if it's Alba or Alda and it's more reading with the B's and D's if I'm writing I feel a lot better but yeah definitely D's and B's do get muddled up sometimes the next one I found this one recently um, I guess it probably always was a struggle but maybe I wasn't well obviously we've only moved to Miami two two and a half years ago so I never really wrote dollar signs but I'm finding the dollar sign and the and sign I get them confused so if I'm sending a price list to somebody talking about prices, I'll sometimes put the and sign and then the price and think, no, that looks wrong, it's the other one. So then I put the dollar sign, I'm okay, okay, that one's right. But I don't just know it in my brain, I have to see it written down and I know that the and sign with the numbers doesn't make sense. So it's, it's weird that I can't just figure it out when I'm writing, like I don't just know it, I kind of have to type it and then see, actually no, that doesn't make sense. It's the other one that does make sense. Um... But I don't get it confused the other way, I never put a dollar sign like in the middle of a sentence as an and word. So it's mostly just the other way in that I put an and sign as a dollar sign. Um, so that's something I found recently. Um, I don't know if that's normal or not, but that's just something I struggle with. The next one is numbers and times. And I remember when I did my dyslexia test, this one stood out to me a lot because I didn't know that dyslexia actually, actually affected numbers as well. So I remember she would say to me, if you... If you were going to get a train and you had to be on platform 10 in carriage number 5, she said, would you get confused and maybe go to platform 5 and get on carriage 10? And I was like, yes, absolutely. Um, so things like that confuse me and things like times as well. So if it's 5 past 10 or 10 past 5, sometimes I'll jumble that up or sometimes as well with speech, actually now I'm talking, I get my words jumbled up and I make a lot of mistakes. I think that's due to dyslexia. Um, maybe it is, maybe it's just me. Who knows? Um, but that's definitely something that I struggle with as well, is messing up my words. We actually have a podcast, and every single episode I make a mistake. Every single episode. I don't even talk that much because we're interviewing other people, but it's guaranteed that I'm going to make that I'm going to make a mistake. And even speaking, I'm making mistakes. <laughs> Obviously, with YouTube, I'm able to chop out some of my mistakes, but I'll leave that one in there so you can see it as I was talking about making mistakes while I'm talking. Um, the next thing is when I read, I feel like the words kind of jumble up together or sometimes, you know, if there's two words, they'll join up as one or the kind of words will move a little bit. And I feel like also the lines aren't particularly straight. Sometimes they go up, sometimes they go down. Like it's just, I feel like the words jump about the page a little bit and the letters jump about a bit and it's just hard to concentrate and it's hard to read. Like, it's hard to say compared to a normal person because I don't know how a normal person reads, obviously. But I feel like normal people, probably the words stay still and they don't move or jump around or go down or up or anything different. They probably just stay where they are. Whereas for me, I feel like the words and the letters are often jumbled up back to front or they're like even the lines as well will swap places. So if I'm reading this line, I'll read this word here and this word goes here. So things jumble around and it's just very confusing. So it does take me ages to read anything. I'm going to get onto that in a minute. Um, but yeah, I do struggle a lot with that, with words and letters jumbling up. The next thing is that it's hard to sound out new words. So if I'm reading about, I don't know, rocket science, something I have no idea what, you know, what the word is, something like a completely new word to me, I find it really hard to sound out the word and figure out how it's probably meant to be said. I feel like most people can kind of say, you know, the first section, middle section, last section, and then put it together and it, it makes a word. Whereas for me, I find it a lot harder to kind of figure out how words are supposed to be said. This also makes reading quite hard because I don't quite understand sometimes how certain letters make certain noises and how, you know, certain letters make certain words and um, like sometimes I'll hear, I'll see a word written down and I won't, I won't realise that that's actually a different word that I already know. I'm trying to think of a, com I'm trying to think of an example but I can't think of one right now. Yeah, sometimes I see words written down I don't know what it is, I don't know what it means, I don't know how to say it, I don't know anything but then if I hear somebody say that word I'll be like, oh, 
well I know that word I just don't know that has, that's how you spell it but even not knowing how you spell it I also read it and can't understand that that's that word so I don't know if that makes sense but to me it does but <laughs> and then the next one that I've realized is my comprehension so I remember in school we would for example read a book now I wouldn't particularly read the book anyway um, I would always find it really hard and get my mum to read the book and tell me what it was about or ask my friend um, but even even without knowing what the book was about, I wouldn't understand the questions that were asked. So, you know, like with um, tests and exams and things, the question would be, you know, two or three lines, and it would take me a good five minutes to figure out what the question was asking me, because I, I think just comprehension is a lot harder for people with dyslexia as well. So that was obviously, it was like that obviously in school, um, it was like that for essays and um, things at university as well, if I had to fill out forms or write my dissertation, for example. But it also happens in day-to-day -day life as well, if I have to answer, obviously things like date of birth, name, things like that is easy. But if you have to answer a longer question, it's a bit more in depth. Sometimes I don't quite know what the question is, what they're asking me. Um, so I have to ask Jeremy quite a lot to help me with things that's like forms and things, because I don't quite understand what the question is, if that makes sense. And my comprehension sometimes can be hard as well. This is actually quite hard to film, because I didn't realise how many things I struggled with. Um, I'm feeling a bit emotional about this. I guess just like talking about it, it's the first time I'm probably talking about like how much I have struggled with all of this. So if you're the same, let me know in the comments that you're the same. Let's bond together so I'm not, I don't feel so alone and so stupid. <laughs> anyway, so the next thing I wanted to talk about is how I am now and how I have been for the past sort of five years. So I have always wanted to read. Every time I go to the airport, I get there early, just so I don't miss my flight, but also I spend my whole time in the bookshops. I love looking at book covers and reading the back of them and reading the stories and finding out, you know, what's the plot of the story or what's this one going to be about or what's this one going to be about and I love reading reviews as well of books and if they're good and if they're thrillers and like I've always been very interested in books but because it's, I find it so hard to read, I don't often buy them and then even if I do buy them, I tend to read maybe two chapters roughly and then give up just because it is so, so hard. So I've actually timed myself. And it takes me about five minutes, I think it was four minutes, about four, four and a half minutes to read a page like this, just one single page, just a normal size book. It'll take me about four minutes to read that page and then four minutes to read this page. But then even whilst I'm reading the next page, I go back and read what I've just read. So like I was saying about the comprehension, it makes reading super, super hard because I'll have read this. It'll take me four minutes. I've really, you know, read it properly. I have to read the line you know, I'll read a sentence maybe three or four times and then carry on through the whole paragraph and then read the whole paragraph again and then read it again and then I go to the next paragraph. It won't make sense, so I'll go back and read that one again. So it really takes me such a long time. So you can imagine that if that takes four minutes to read and then this one takes four minutes to read and I still have to go back and forth all the time, you can imagine how long it takes to read a full book. It just takes far too long. I've read books before and I've given myself like three months, six months and I've still not even probably read a quarter of it or you know a sixth of it or something so by that time I give up just because it takes so long and then I've forgotten what had happened right at the beginning of the book because it's taken me so long to get to where I'm at now that's not even halfway through so I find that as well that with things like murder mysteries or um, the girl with the dragon tattoo for example I read those three books but I remember I really had to try and read every single day so that I wouldn't forget what happened at the beginning because obviously with things like that they leave little you know trails throughout the book and throughout the story for you to kind of pick up on and think oh yeah that happened then but if you're reading it six months later you've forgotten what happened on the very first page so that's why I haven't particularly read a whole lot at all I think I've maybe read five to ten books total in my life ever um, I've read The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Night Time so I've read that twice I've read the three millennium books, so there's the girl with dragon tattoo, the girl who kicked the hornet's nest and the other one, whatever it's called. Um, what else have I read? See, I feel like that's it. Four books, maybe. I think there might be a fifth. Can't remember it. So, you know, for a 32-year-old woman to have read four books, that's not amazing. But obviously I've had my reasons, it obviously is hard for me. But I've been so dying to read books my whole life. I've always been interested in them, but I've just never really had the opportunity to read them properly. So with that being said, obviously I did try Audible um, a couple of years ago, probably two years ago, and that was good. Um, I did find it expensive, it's $15 a month, um, which is fine, but you know, it does add up over the year. It's over $170-ish. Um, so it does get expensive. 
and I often found that with audio audio books I would like my brain would wander off a little bit you kind of have to concentrate so much because you know you have to listen to the story and if you're listening to an audio book whilst you're walking you might think oh I like what she's wearing oh I like that bird or oh you know you get distracted quite easily about things and then start to think about work and life and then you kind of forget that you're listening to a story that you need to be listening to so even though I think audiobooks work for certain people they didn't particularly work for me just because my mind would wander off with other things if I didn't really try and concentrate on what I was listening to and then the reason that I have fallen in love with reading now is kind of a bit of a coincidence that kind of happened upon it I didn't really think about it in like a logical sense but anyway my husband was recommended this book recently Daring Greatly by Brony Brown um, and he recommended me to read it and I'd read maybe the first you know couple of pages and I found it really hard to read it didn't quite make sense everything else I've explained why you know it's hard to read with the letters and the words jumbling up and everything the comprehension is hard you know everything's kind of hard to read so he recommended I read this I tried it and gave up and then for some reason I don't even remember how it happened but for some reason I thought oh well, I'll just download the audiobook and listen to it at the same time as reading the actual book and oh my god it's an absolute game changer because with audiobooks, like I said, my mind wanders a little bit, whereas if you're listening to it and reading it at the same time, your mind can't wander off, but also you're listening to how it's supposed to be read, so the words that you don't know how to read, or, you know, you're not quite sure how it's said properly, or, I don't know, even sometimes I find with books as well, you, I can't quite figure out how the sentence is supposed to be said, like if somebody's angry, or if they're upset, or if they're shocked, or happy, you know, I find that hard as well sometimes, so when you're listening to somebody reading the book, how it's supposed to be read, whilst you're reading the words it's an absolute game changer it's so good to be able to actually read a book so with this one i'm now on page 184 and i've been reading this for about a week a week and a half maybe this i would never have got this far and if i had it would have taken me maybe a year at least to get this far so it's amazing that like i feel like i now have this whole new world of opportunities and books that i can read because I can download the audiobooks online, so I've actually joined, well Jeremy joined the library and he's been downloading books for a while now from them, um, ebooks. But I can get audiobooks on the library website and download them or put them on my phone. And then I just recently ordered a Kindle, which is in here. I'm going to be doing an unboxing, um, which will be live on the channel next Monday, so stay tuned for that. It's the new Kindle paper, uh, white, paper, paper, white thing can't remember what it's called but it arrived today and I'm so excited because I have like 30 audiobooks on my phone that I can't wait to listen to but also read along at the same time the other great thing about listening to the book whilst I'm reading it is that if I you know need to reread something I can just pause the audiobook and actually just read that paragraph that she said to me that I did maybe didn't quite get the first time I can either just pause the audiobook and reread that little paragraph or I can you know rewind the the um, audiobook a little bit and listen to it again and read it again so it's really good in terms of comprehension in terms of reading in terms of you know also the ease of reading because like I said I find it hard sometimes the lines switch you know the words switch lines and things like that which I find hard but with this because I'm reading it as the words because I'm listening to it as I'm reading it the words seem to stay in place a lot more um, I don't know anyway it's been amazing so I have like I said, 30 books on my phone that I can't wait to listen to. I've just got my Kindle, which I can't wait to crack open. So that will be live next Monday if you want to watch that and see what the new Kindle is all about. Um, and yeah, I can't wait to get learning and to read all these books that have been recommended to me and other people read and, you know, all the stories that I've missed out on or the knowledge that I've missed out on. So yeah, I feel like it's like a whole new lease of life and I'm so excited. So if any of you guys have dyslexia, if you struggle with reading, please, please give this a go because it's absolutely changed my life I want to say. Um, try and find audiobooks. You can obviously sign up to Audible, it's about 10 or 15 dollars a month roughly around there. Um, obviously you can also buy um, ebooks online or if you can join your local library and find them both on there. Um, I think that would be the best thing to do because then you get it for free and it's legal. Um, you can just buy Kindle and put your books on there and put the audiobooks on your phone and listen to them at the same time as you're reading. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> Um, so the first couple of books that I do want to read are, so I'm currently reading Daring Greatly, like I said, I'm on about page 184, so I've got about another 60-70 uh, pages left, something like that, before I finish it. 
And then the other ones I want to read are When Breath Becomes Air and um, Nine Perfect Strangers. So I bought these last time I was at the airport. I promised Jeremy this time I was going to read them because I often buy books and I'm like, yeah, I promise I'll read it and then I read a little bit and then I struggle and I can't. Like this one I tried to read maybe four or five times. Same with this one. I've read this one actually probably even more than four or five times. I always read the first couple of chapters and then it just doesn't sink in or make sense or just don't get it. So I'm so looking forward to reading these with the audiobook alongside it so that it actually makes sense and I can understand it and I can actually read these books that I've been dying to read. And then the other book that I have actually here, like the physical book rather than the um, e-book, is Shantaram. So my friend Karen came and visited us last year and she had read this on the plane and she finished it when she was here so she left it here for us to read. Obviously Jeremy's got his Kindle so he doesn't read actual books and I was never gonna even pretend to try and read this. I mean it's, let me just see how many pages are on. 928? No, more than that. 933. Never in my life would I even start to read a book with 933 pages. But now that I have the audiobook on my phone, I actually can't wait to read this and to say that I've read this book that's like 933 pages long. That's going to be such an achievement for me. So yeah, I can't wait to get going with this reading and read so many amazing books and stories and just to learn so much. And yeah, I don't know, I'm just excited. So if you're dyslexic, please try this. If you do, let me know in the comments below if you try it. If this is something you do already, let me know. Let's have a chat in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a big thumbs up. It really helps me out. And subscribe for more videos. Um, I'm going to be posting, like I said, the Kindle unboxing next week. And I think I'm going to do a book video talking about the 30 books that I'm going to read first. It's my first 30 picks. What are they going to be? What do I want to read about? You can find out in that video. So subscribe so you don't miss those. And turn on the notification bell while you're at it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!